you use adjacent photon fields, name some methods how you would actually plan these and then describe the methods in detail. So adjacent photon and electron fields are not horribly common, but because they're more complex, it's important that a physicist knows what physics is going on in the background to best prepare the plan and provide optimal results. So here we have simple gapping. There's a lot of methods, so we'll cover them all here. Simple gapping, we've got moving junction, we've got beam splitting, and then a uh, beam spoiler. So simple, name the methods, but the devil is in the details, and now we need to describe these. So let's talk, number one, about simple gapping. So essentially, you just want to introduce a gap between the fields so that the overlap doesn't hit the OAR. So watch overlap. And this, in a way, can be tricky because obviously you have, you thankfully you have a treatment planning system, but it's a manual process. You may have to move the fields ultimately uh, it's an iterative process. You try a, a distance apart and then you calc, see what it looks like, then keep, maybe it's too close, too much overlap, you make it bigger. And then at the machine, you need to be very careful and very precise on the overlap too and be sure your setup is correct right before you treat. Otherwise, all that hard work in the treatment planning system will be for naught. And the disadvantage of this is it can introduce cold spots within the dose distribution, but it's, again, theoretically much simpler and can be executed a little easier than possibly some of the others. So the second moving junction, essentially you're going to allow the divergent fields to overlap but you're only going to partially give the prescription. And then after a set of, I don't know, a, a few fractions, you're gonna slide that junction a certain distance so no volume gets hot or cold spots. It's kind of like we talk about CSI when we want to feather. It's something similar to that. And this is a little more complicated. You're gonna have more plans or fields and then you want to when you slide that junction you have to be very precise because again otherwise you're going to cause those hot and cold spots and what you think you're going to get in the tps you're no longer going to get and then the third the beam splitting ultimately this pushes one of the jaws to the center of the field shielding that so you can line up the fields without using divergence at all. So this does require exact field alignment because if the jaw is off, the treatment planning system, if that is not accurate, then again, you're going to get dose distribution you don't expect, but it certainly is a method. And a lot of people use beam splitting. It's a fairly simple method. You just move the jaw over. You can see what that dose distribution looks like. It's easier for the therapist. So it is one of the more popular methods to do this. And then finally, we do have beam spoilers. And ultimately, this just causes edges of the fields to have an increased penumbra. And the match line is blurred, resulting in a smaller hot or cold spot. So really, in the clinic, it depends on your physician and what you as a physicist feel most comfortable with, your staffing, how competent they are, how, I guess, good you feel about them being able to follow directions and the fine details. But ultimately, here are four different methods to play in with adjacent photon fields. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks for watching and best of luck.